Hello, beautiful internet family, Danny from DanceTube.tv, and if you're new around these parts, then you can expect brutally honest tech reviews on the channel. I've made it my mission to help tech enthusiasts unlock their creative potential with technology, and today we're checking out the newly released Waypoint modes for the Mavic Mini. And this is available through the Lychee application, it's still in beta right now, so not everyone can get it. But for an initial beta version, I'm extremely impressed. If you're absolutely obsessed with drones, then you have to check out Eye in the Sky Clothing. They have some awesome drone gear that's available right now. They have some really unique designs and I have a 10% off discount code for my viewers. So use the code DANSTUBE on checkout to save 10% off your purchases. There's some really cool gear in there. So if you love flying your drone, then this is the must go place to really kit yourself out with some cool hoodies, hats, and shirts. So jumping back into the waypoint modes, this is something that I've been waiting for for a very long time now through the Lychee application. It's taken an extended period of time. There have been other applications that have released waypoint modes for the Mavic Mini, but Lychee for whatever reason took their time to release this and it makes a lot of sense because having a look at it at its initial beta release, it's actually really stable. And previous waypoint modes that I've tested have definitely had a lot of bugs. So to see a beta version this polished is actually extremely refreshing. It's extremely easy to initiate the waypoint mode. You literally tap in the top left corner, you have all the different modes there, you just select waypoint and you're ready to go. It's that simple. And like I said, this is still in beta. So we know that there's gonna be some performance improvements, there's gonna be some stability improvements, and hopefully some additional added features and functionality in the future. But right now it's extremely amazing. Like honestly, it's fully fleshed out. There's so much to it, which was, I guess some of the limitations of the other waypoint modes from other third party applications. But Lychee have come out of the gates just banging hard. They are blazing their guns. They are showing off so many different features here, which is extremely impressive because from the features I tested, they all worked really well. You have options to choose straight lines or curved lines when you set out your path. You can also literally just free draw. So you can have a little pencil tool and you can draw a Z for example, or you could draw a straight line, or you can draw whatever pattern you want and it will map out the waypoints for you. Extremely easy. And then from there you can set a point of interest and you can get the drone to face that point of interest at multiple points, at one point, at all points. You can then also customize every single waypoint. So you can click on it and you have a variety of options to go through. And it was almost overwhelming at first. I definitely didn't get it straight away. I had to play around with it a bit, but once I got used to it, I was extremely impressed. It was intuitive and easy to use. It was unbelievable how seamless it was. And I guess the fact that I've trialed other, you know, beta versions of waypoint modes, and they've been okay, but they haven't been fantastic. You know, this was a really impressive release. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not a perfect waypoint feature. It can still be a little bit awkward and it has some very jagged, jarring movements and it isn't the smoothest waypoint experience available right now. But for a beta version and for a beta version with so many features available, I was really impressed with what they had to offer here. You've got the usual features that you would expect. You know, you can save missions, you can load those missions back up again, you can email those missions to different people, which I thought was quite cool. You then have kind of some overarching settings that will kind of overpower some of the waypoint modes that you've set up. So let's say, for example, you've got, you know, a setting to have like a point of interest as the focus and you want to have the heading a particular way and you want to have the drone kind of behaving in a particular way. You can kind of overpower a few of those settings with the overarching settings, which are on the far left side there. Or when you're looking at waypoints, you can tap on them and then customize uh, what you want the flight to look like, what you want that waypoint plan to look like. And then if you just go back into your main settings, I guess you could say like the advanced settings on the left there, you can kind of just set everything to custom or leave it at default and then just 
play around with the settings on each waypoint. So you have a fair bit of control there. You can either just kind of set it up as this is how I want the drone to operate with all of my waypoints. And then you just draw the waypoints and you go straight away, which makes it a really quick process. Or you can get into the nitty gritty of it and customize almost any setting you want to. I noticed when I had a point of interest, it did a great job with a lot of the movements. Occasionally when it would go on a path and it would have the curved line, it would kind of move a little bit awkwardly and it would have kind of those awkward dun 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 dun, almost like bumping movements, I guess. I love it how I tried to describe that with a sound. The du -du, you know, you know what I'm trying to say, right, guys? The du -du movement. But in all seriousness, it can be a little bit jumpy. And I think that's the fact that it's a Wi-Fi connection in the Mavic Mini. It's not that OcuSync that creates almost a immediate response from the controller input. So I think if you've flown a Mavic Mini before, you'll know that if you try to your left or right, so if you try to look left or right, it will actually be a little bit awkward. It will kind of give you um, jumpy movements, I want to say, and it's not extremely responsive. And I think that's due to the fact that it is a Wi-Fi connection, so it's not immediately getting sent through. It's not as um, reliable as OcuSync in that regard. So I think when they're trying to program something like Waypoints for a Mavic Mini, I think that's potentially where those awkward jumpy movements come in. So it's hard to say whether it was more efficient going with just straight lines or curved lines with the path. I love the effect that a curved line gives. It looks a lot more dynamic and free flowing rather than kind of robotic and standardized, I guess you could say, with just those straight edges. But I felt like the straight lines actually responded a lot better with something like this because I guess it is an algorithm, you know, they're programming it to kind of follow a particular path. So it actually probably works a little better with the straight lines. But, you know, still a lot of the movements from the curve lines could be usable. It's more so the end of the movement as it's coming around that curve and then focusing on the waypoint or sorry, on the point of interest. That's when it seems to be pretty reliable in that regard. I also found that it was pretty easy to accidentally add a waypoint or, for example, if I was adding a point of interest, it was really easy to just tap on the map and accidentally add too many waypoints or point of interest. So I like the fact that they have that lock so you can actually lock yourself out. You can, you know, idiot proof it, kid proof it almost. So you actually don't accidentally add something because the amount of times in my test where I would accidentally add a waypoint was actually quite frustrating. It's um, almost too responsive in that regard. But I think that's more so down to user error. And the more you use it, the more you'll get used to it. So if you look at the batch waypoint settings, as you can see, there are a fair few options here. And I like that you can just have batch settings. So as I've drawn a mission out, I can just make all of the settings for those waypoints the exact same. So that makes it really easy to just jump into it and you know get video straight away or take photos straight away. It's really easy in that regard. And then when you tap on each waypoint, you can choose what each waypoint is going to do. So for example, I could make waypoint one initiate the recording process. I could then make it stop recording at waypoint three and do a different movement. And then at waypoint four, it could take a photo. And then waypoint five, it could start recording again. And you can customize every single setting on each waypoint to make it a really dynamic, unique flight. And I absolutely love that. I really like the unique perspective that you can get here. So with this video you see here of me walking into the middle of the field, basically what I've done is I've got it so the drone is focusing in on the middle of the field, but it's also pointing down a little bit and the heading slightly different. So it actually looks really cool because it's kind of circling around me as I'm walking and it gives quite a unique look here. Yes, you can see there's a few little awkward movements where it's trying to kind of circle around and it's a bit jumpy but you can see that it successfully did it it had no issues like it did exactly what you wanted it to you just kind of want it to see a little bit smoother you know a bit more of a smoother experience overall which is something that they can improve and again it's still only in beta so we can only expect it to improve from here Honestly, I could create multiple videos breaking down all of the different features here. There's, there's kind of too many to go through, but I guess at its core, it did exactly what I wanted it to do. It was intuitive, it was easy to use, and it had a variety of features available to me. So I was extremely impressed by that. I also love all the different options at each waypoint. It really does give the full creative control to the actual pilot. And, you know, I really did trust 
the experience of waypoints. It, it actually felt like something that they'd been working on for a long time, where other versions of waypoints from third party applications, I did feel like it was kind of rushed out and it wasn't the most reliable experience. So to see Lychee take their time and release something that is almost ready, like this could be a public release at this point and people wouldn't be mad. It's a well polished waypoint feature. I also found that the drone was responsive to everything that I was putting into the application. So I could clear out all of the missions. I could create, you know, multiple missions, have waypoints everywhere. I could then clear it with almost a tap of a button. I think it's just two taps. You've cleared the entire map and then I can load up a mission. And I loaded up the football field here. It immediately goes to that location. And then I changed it from a straight line to a curved line when it goes to different waypoints. And it just automatically added that for me seamlessly. And then I created this mission and it worked perfectly fine. You know, it went around the soccer field. It probably was too tight of a waypoint, so it was moving very quickly, which did give some kind of jumpy, jarring movements. But when it was flying on a straight path, it was fantastic. And like I was saying, near the end of the curve, it seems to be a bit more reliable as it's kind of settling into that. And again, it's so easy to jump between, you know, the map view and the actual feed from the camera and just to tweak the settings as you're going. It's great. I had no issues with it crashing. I didn't have it, you know, trying to figure out what to do or getting confused. It just worked. And that's exactly what you want, especially when you're using a third party application to fly something that is quite expensive. You want to make sure it's reliable and it was extremely reliable. I've been impressed, deeply impressed with the Lychee Waypoint experience. So then even looking at the actions that you can add to each waypoint, I think this is where it really shines because you have control over so many different things here that other applications don't allow you to do. So you can choose to stay in a location for a particular you know, amount of time. You can take a photo, you can start recording and stop recording, but then you have multiple other options and two options that are really unique is that you can rotate the aircraft at each waypoint. So you can actually have a dynamic movement from waypoint to waypoint. You can also choose to tilt the camera. So if there's a subject that you want to focus on, you can get the camera to move when you hit a different waypoint. And again, I loved that control. I love the fact that I can basically do really whatever I want with the waypoint mode in Lychee. So honestly, I've been really impressed so far. There's a lot to unpack here, and I will do another video in the future to show you what else it has to offer. I'll show you some other features now at the end just to show you what the mission looks like, how it unfolds, what the footage looks like from the actual drone itself, and I would love your thoughts in the comments below. This is a really exciting time for the Mavic Mini, and I'll chat to you in the next one, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and talk to you very soon. Peace out.